All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode four of Finds. How's it going, Amira? Going well. How are you, Connor? I'm doing fantastic. Tell me one thing about your trip to Santa Barbara. To Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so my like, well, this is not even like really about my trip. It's just more of a ah. weird story that my friend told me when I was there. Uh, so she works for this company. It's a startup. They're called Appeal. <laughs> wow, fake promo, but like, no okay. <laughs> but anyway, the like whole invention is that they're like creating this th this like liquid cover that you put over fruits to make them last longer, like produce and stuff. Huh. Like as like a demo. You mean like, lemon juice? <laughs> yeah, basically like, long term lemon juice. Um. Oh, but like you know, it's like for producers to like keep things in the market and whatnot. Right. Um. But like people had concerns like about like is it safe to put on our food on our produce? And so like one of like the VPs or whatever would go to like these talks and like have a glass of the like liquid that they use or whatever it is to like cover stuff and like chugged it to be like it's safe and i'm just like bro you could have used a shot glass like it did not have to be you no know, eight ounces it's, or, it's probably for the people in the back <laughs> just to be like are you sure yeah yeah i don't know that was a story that kind of stuck with me i'm just i've just been bothered by it ever since because she said it was like a thick tacky kind of consistency it is not like lit like water so, so so where was it was this on this wasn't on your trip no this is just a story she told me and it's just been oh. for so long <laughs> that is the first thing that came to mind when you asked uh, you, who told you this uh my friend from oh, okay yeah. cool How i saw parasite <laughs> oh okay so yes it was and like the, again, this warrants longer discussion, probably not here, uh, but I really liked it. It was a lot for me to handle. Yeah. I generally have t a hard time in movie theaters in general, and this was so much. I, w I was shaking. This was so good, though. It was it so was. well done. I really enjoyed it. It, it, I honestly, per personally, I could have been more bothered. I could have stood to be more bothered, but mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate the direction. I hope there's more coming from this person. Oh, man. I hope so as well. Sure. Today, we're talking about weird internet. Yeah. What comes to mind when you think about weird internet? Like, is it a dinosaur of our 90s past? Or is it still alive and I'm just out of touch? Like Tumblr. Right, yeah, I think that's totally valid. <laughs> Like, I always wonder, is Tumblr still happening? And people are like, yes. And I'm like, mm, I don't know if I believe you. Like, maybe. I don't, I don't think Tumblr's happening. But again, it's because of all of these different communities that have kind of separated. Yeah. I did a little research and determined that OG weird internet, if I'm going to, like, define weird internet, it's yes. basically when you log in, you're like, <laughs> I guess your first response is like, what <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah. <laughs> um, like, cause some when you go to a website, typically you're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, this makes sense. And then at a certain point, you're like, why, why, what, what's going on? You know what? Okay, so like your description is reminding me of the filter that I posted over the weekend. Did you see that? The filter? Yeah, no. My Instagram. Oh yes, that's <laughs> weird internet. Weird internet. So like for people who don't follow me, shame on you. But also, <laughs> also there is this filter that my friend showed me where it starts out where like it's all like very like VR, like animated old school where everything is just like a shape. So like, you know, things are made out of like rectangles and that makes a box. And then like you start out with like this figure is looking down at something and it's like your face that is being used in the story. And then it also um, pans out. And then it turns out that the figure that is holding your face is also you. And then that person is standing on some mountains, which are also your face. And then it spins and then it shows you the world and your face is the world. It's but like, like weird glitch art. Um, yeah. I saw this on TikTok. <laughs> <sighs> and what was funny is that the person who was doing it was like, probably blazed <laughs> and just as it zoomed out he realized what was going on <laughs> oh my goodness yeah yeah that's i think that's definitely weird internet 
Mm -hmm. um, so I think we all know what it is because when we see it, <laughs> yeah, our thought is like, our, our thought is what the fuck, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's one of those things that are difficult to describe, but you know when you see it. Yes. Once it clicks, it clicks. So I Googled weird internet just to see if I could get a directory. And it was surprisingly difficult to find, but there were articles. Yeah. And it seems to have started with GeoCities. I could believe that. Were you around for GeoCities? I feel like I skipped right over GeoCities. If I was like maybe three years older, I could see myself being on. Like, right, I think that's what happened with me as well. Yeah, because like MySpace to Tumblr, like that was the route of microblogging. Right, were you on MySpace? My journal. Yeah, no, I was on LiveJournal first and then MySpace. Mm -hmm. Was it weird? Um, I mean, it was weird in that, like, the things that people learned to do to their pages, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like it would start with having the stars, like, twinkle behind your cursor, and then it would get to, you know, things that, like, went, like, you know, marquee stuff that would go across and things like that, and, like, the flames and things. Right. I know exactly what you're talking about. Definitely bad, and, like, if you had, if MySpace maybe gave you more rain, it could have been weird. I'm thinking, like... The aesthetic of Nyan Cat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what's funny now is that that's a style. That is a style of that time. Right, right. I just thought of another weird internet thing. Well, I guess, like, would you call this weird Dino's Pizza website? Dino's Pizza? Let's go. Can you show me? Um, yeah, let me actually just, let me find it. We're just trying to think about it. I yeah. asked some of my friends, while you're looking for that, I asked my friends, like, what, like, early weird internet? And they're like, oh, like, E-bombs world? And I was like, yo, yes. Do you remember E-bombs world? No, I don't know what you're talking about. I, that was, like, early internet. This was when we were, like, all, like, on AIM, you know, and sending each other funny stuff. But it was a directory for just, like, weird funny shit. Like, oh. early memes. Oh. Okay, no, I never messed with that. But that sounds prime. It was, it was pretty prime. Okay, so I found uh, Dino's website. Great. So this is Dino's, like, that's... Yes. No, right? So this is stylistically, they call this Web 1.0, right? Yeah. But there is, like, little Easter eggs that I don't know about, but I've heard about. Oh, goodness. But yeah. This is phenomenal. So like, this is a prime example of what weird internet felt like. Absolutely. And there's a video that I'll link to, but people used to use this as examples of what not to do on websites. Oh, that takes you actually out. Yeah, exactly. And it's kind of weird because it's like, why? This is just like, I don't know, it's like so you're, oh wait, like they even have a guest book. Oh shoot, it just takes you to Facebook, that's rude. Boo. <laughs> so but, a yeah. little bit, so like we have a lot of flashing GIFs, kind of pixelated GIFs, yeah. uh, those repeating backgrounds. Right, and like not like taking over, like not um, over, um, what do you call it? Like when you like um, overdo on someone else's stylings, overwrite someone else's stylings. Right. Yeah, so it's like the links are just anything that the browser shows you, everything is just out of the box. Default settings. Exactly. Yeah, so this, so that's kind of what we're talking about as far as weird internet, at least a portion of it. And I think, in my research, people are trying to preserve that styling because if we look at websites now, I'm trying to think of like an example of how sterile websites have become. I think we all know it because if you go to any startup's website ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like it's the same. I think it's like aesthetic all around though because I think about the way that st people style their homes and like Target has got it on lock, you know? Like, I, get, I don't know if it's like Target decor, but I feel like anytime I like look at a YouTuber's like home renovation or home DIY stuff. There's like a very like wicker and like gold and like I'm very much this type of like, you know, plants and everything. Right. So like 
all around, like, we've kind of just, like, mainstream the look of stuff. Like, we, like, what is a good website is really just, like, really clean and minimal and, like, blank, you know? Yeah. It makes, it's, it's style, really, and it's just fashion. Yeah, it's fashion. I don't know, I miss, like, the wacky and the weird and the, like, people, like, that's, like, I mean, honestly, like, half of the cool things that have ever, like, been invented were, like, accidents, and if we just keep following, like, style books, they're not gonna be that fun, so it's, like, I don't know, weird internets are just, like, that, like, you know, someone just, like, dicking around, doing something for fun, and it's pretty, it always has, like, some, like, it's, like, I don't know, even if it's, like, not worth anything, like, it's still interesting enough, and especially in this day of, like, viral, things going viral, like, you can be, the like, the dumbest shit ever, and, like, it could be so popular. So it's like, why not? Do you want to show me some of the things you found in your weird internet hunt? Yeah, yeah. And so I want to preface this by like, what I feel like how like weird internet has evolved. Like it has the same roots, but it doesn't have the same flavor, right? Like internet back in the day was new to everybody. Nobody knew what was happening. There were no rules. There were no guidelines. Like now we have like standards, like you should use like- Best practices, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, back then, it was just people, like, trying stuff. And, like, I think, like, the modern version of that is, like, people, yes, trying stuff, but now they, like, quote, unquote, know better. And so there's kind of these, like, restraints, which, like, make things definitely, like, like, they move us further along as, like, things being, like, more stable and secure and whatnot. But, like it's not as fun and not as wacky. Like for example, there's that woman who went viral on Twitter for having those portraits made totally out of just like CSS, right? right. And like, yeah, that's weird internet. Portraits, right? But it's like, nobody thinks to like bend tech that way anymore. Like, cause there's just like, like that's not something you would do. You'd be like, that's not the re right medium for it. Like right. SVG or something. And she like did that all with like old school HTML stuff. I feel like developers would be pissed off, really. <laughs> right? They look at that, they're like, that's really impressive, but that would be a nightmare to deal with. Right, exactly. And for me, like, as someone who does it for their day job, I would just be like, like, you're not getting paid for that? Like, why would you waste your time? But, like, it's art, you know? It's, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe just, like, the modern day flavor of it. But anyways, let's go on to some examples with that preface. Um, we're done with Dino's. <laughs> uh, and so I thought this was just kind of fun I don't know like this is something that if I was like ever kind of like a film nerd and I wanted to like set up a scene I would just put this full screen and use this it's called hackertyper.net and it's basically just a black screen with the green glowy font and like no I'm like typing nonsense right now like literally just typing the same key over and over but it oh just yes and it looks like you're doing some hardcore computer stuff Right, and so it's like, if I was some actor, I'd just be like, oh my god, da, 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 you know, I'm gonna hack the mainframe or whatever, and like, This you is know. great if you're like shooting a movie, you know? Right, right, but at the same time, it's just kind of fun, like, I could totally imagine like an 11 year old cousin just being like, I'm, this is so neat, like, da, 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 da. I'm so, you know, it at least keep their attention for like five minutes. So like, weird internet is just people having fun, it seems like, it's not profit, it's fun. Right, exactly, where it's like, there is no way to profit at this, right? Yeah, like, this exists solely for your enjoyment. Right, just for the exercise. Um, and so then this next one is actually one that my coworker made, which, because, like, we are, okay, at our company, we use Slack, we have over, like, 1,500 custom emoji. And so we are very heavy in the emoji world. And um, we're always using it, like, in our notes and whatever. And so this was one of our engineering managers made this little thing that's, like, uh, yeah, it adds the clap emoji it's between the, the words. Right, and it does, and it does it perfectly because, like, I feel like most people would forget about this clap, but you clap after every word. Like, yeah. I don't know good design. Off. Right, he knows, and so like, I don't know. I might like put a little request though that he adds in like different, you know, emoji colors. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I like, like this side. because yeah. it's it's weird internet, but in the styling of present day. Right, where it's kind of just like, I need, I wanted to like play with the thing and like see if I can get it to work. And it was kind of like just useful for like that moment, but it's not a big weird thing. Um, I've seen a similar thing uh, that takes the word and makes it like SpongeBob case. You know what I'm talking about? Ooh, yeah. Where it's like alternate, so it looks like you're talking like this. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, like the sarcastic tone. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. See, and I feel like it's just little like tool things like that where like this captures like an internet moment, you know, like this. There's culture. Exactly, exactly. It captures a snapshot of like internet culture, and that's what I think kind of makes it like weird for being such like a basic tool. Um, and so this woman I actually met because she came and did a talk at my boot camp. Um, and so I don't know if you remember back in like, oh my gosh, like four years ago or something, there like came out this like new Barbie book where she's like, I'm computer engineer Barbie. But like the entire time she's just like, oh my gosh, like I can't get the disc into my computer. I should go ask Brad for help. And then, like, Brad does Ooh. it. Yeah. And then she's just like, oh my gosh, like, let me go and take the notes. Like, you code up the thing, Eric, or something. And it's just like, bitch. Wow. <laughs> that was, that's a huge missed opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like super dumb. And so she like built this thing where basically you could take pictures from the book and then you just write your own writings over it. That's <laughs> so good. <laughs> Dumb shit there, like, we're looking at wow. this photo where she's stabbing someone with scissors in front of a computer. <laughs> um, and then like there's other ones that are like, okay, what about this one? Uh, so she's there with like two other men and th she's saying, it will go faster if Brian and I help offer Steven. You're full of shit, says Barbie. Haven't you read the mythical man month? You'll just delay me further. <laughs> And the Mythical Man Month is like this kind of famous book where it talks about like adding more people to a team doesn't make the like the project go faster. Like you just made it more complex. And <laughs> yeah, this is great. So it's just <laughs> user generated content within constraints. It's all pages from the book with people <laughs> remixing that Barbie book. Right, right. And so like as you see people are like as serious and as like playful as they want to be with it but it's just kind of this weird I feel like it misses like it touches on this other thing weird internet would have where you'd have like this weird community with people you've never met and you don't even know them as full humans it's just like someone left a mark here and like I know and like they could possibly be on the other side of the planet I guess like the same thing that like Omega kind of gave you where you're like yeah. I'm gonna be friends with a stranger and like I have no idea who they are but they're like real or like there's yeah. real. so Question, uh, two questions. First, who, how did you find us? Um, yeah, so this woman, she actually came and did a talk at my boot camp because she was telling us about how when she got put this up, it became super popular. And so then a bunch of people just came and tried to like hack the shit out of it. And so she was just learning by like trial by fire of like how to do like security by like, you know, trying to like be one ahead of like all of these like Reddit hackers and trolls. Wow, yeah. that's brutal pretty insane and I'm like so upset because like I did not know enough about I didn't understand enough about technology to like fully appreciate her talk at the time and I don't know if she like has it recorded anywhere but um yeah Second no, question super smart like can we click fix a page see what see what's going on oh, here absolutely let's check it out okay nice okay. so you can pick from a selection of pages and then write your own text yeah cool she like shows you what the original text would be too so you could totally like riff off of it nice dark but yeah that's cool pretty simple what else you got all right so this next thing is actually a game which i feel like so many of so much of the weird internet was like pointless ass games that would just eat up your time because you were just bored as shit um, but this one has like taken over my entire job. Like, like, well, like everybody in my work is all about it. It's called guess my word. And so this constraint is that it's an English word and that's the only guess that you'll have other than that. Every time you make a guess of a word, it will, um, tell you whether that word is like alphabetically before or after the word. Wow. And they have like different levels and they tell you like how many guesses it took you. So it's a, it's a, for our listeners, it's a blank screen, there's an input, and then a button that says guess, and you just type in a word, and you press guess. Right, so I mean, like, you kind of want to go, like, middle-ish, right? So I'm going to be, like, maple, and it says, like, the word is after maple. This is, like, from a, like, software engineer standpoint, something relatively easy to make. Yeah, like. But so fun. 
So simple and yet so fun, right? And it's one of those things where it's like, you don't have to maintain this. Like you scrape a dictionary and just randomly pick one word every day, then like the rest takes care of itself. And it's just so, just like so perfectly simple and gives so much joy. That's amazing. This yeah. like reminds me, have you ever played um, Infinite Paper Clips? No, what is that? that? That's a story for another time. It's another weird game that has like this minimalist thing going on that. Yeah, right? It's like you don't need much. No, that's, that's wild because I used to think like, oh, I should get in game development. And then when I think about game development, I'm just thinking like, you know, Zelda. <laughs> yeah. And I don't realize that you can make the equivalent of board games online like this. Yeah, and considering like, oh my God, game industry, wild, but anyway. Um, yeah, and so, I, you know, I haven't found too many of, like, these type of fun games, but, you know, when, when you find them, they're pretty gold. Uh, the next thing is something you might already know about, uh, though it's called the Wayback Machine, uh, but you basically can just, like, look at almost any website at, like, a certain point in time. Like, it'll give you a timeline of it. So, like, what, I, I want to check something out, and I'm trying to think. Yeah like the earliest website that I remember. Ooh, an early website. Like, yeah. the, the furthest back I can go is I remember, like, I remember going to early RuneScape. <laughs> RuneScape? Oh, it's just called RuneScape. Oh, okay. Like that? Dot yeah, com. I mean, I'm certain it still exists. Well, they usually give a timeline. <gasps> oh, oh, specifically? That's kind of wild. What if it was just like this? Okay, so these don't seem like the same. 2005 to two, 2015. Anyway, weird. Oh. Yeah. So it's just, it's just a time machine for websites if you wanted to look something up. Yeah, it's like taking snapshots of pages over time. So like maybe, I don't know, like just- Can like, you type in eBombs world or e Tumblr? World, like that? Yeah, yes, perfect. Like this was the one that someone brought up at work. 2001 to 2017. Yeah, it's all modern today. I don't know if you can see the different versions. How does this work? Oh, that actually just took you. Oh no. So like this is still- yeah, this is present day. Yeah, and so then you can use this. Oh. Go all the way 2003. back. 2003. <laughs> what? Like, do the links work? They work. Wild. This is an intense project. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, see, this is like early, like a place where shit posting was happening early. This is none of it's good. <laughs> okay, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, we, we should leave here. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. Anyway, quick escape. <laughs> so uh, but anyway, Wayback is a tool to go back and look at the history of it, version history of any website. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I'm not even entirely sure the motivations and like who funds that, but like, it's just something I've always known about. And honestly, it's been kind of helpful for when you're like, man, there used to be this thing on this site or like it used to look a certain way and I wanted to like grab some image from it or something. Like, I don't know, even like the other day, like someone hit me up and was like, hey, do you remember like this wedding website that we saw a while back? And I was like, you're literally talking like 10 years ago. But found at least something about it and was able to do a screen grab of it so i mean like it's a cool tool and it's definitely like a life like you know a little archive thing does it uh, this is this is opening a lot of possibilities i'm like are my dead blogs somewhere there Ooh, that would be good to try and find yeah i this is going to be my own time and i'm very curious yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right especially with the way that like myspace just lost everything yeah right that's so wild. Even though it's like that data was never mine, I still feel like I'm like, I don't know. Grieving, like, right? <laughs> right? It's like, I deserve something for not having that. Like, Right. And that speaks to something that um, is happening now that I'm kind of like tangentially interested in is IndieWeb, which is kind of 
addressing the problem if a website like MySpace goes down or Facebook, like where, what happens to all your stuff? Is there a way for you to own it? Right, right. And like, oh gosh, so much, so much rules around that or lack of rules rather. Like we were just so not prepared for the internet. It happened to us. <laughs> we're um, getting better. Um, what's this one? Yeah, so this is like so familiar to me in the way that like this is the kind of shit I'd be doing in middle school where you're like, I am bored as heck and I just want to press a button and see something dumb, you know, and just laugh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, yep. that's what my phone is for. Right, right, exactly. We've just grown up. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> just click the button and they just show you weird shit. This is good. Like, this is just bees put over like shots yes. from Oprah giving people cars. Right. I've seen this video and I love it. Oh, uh, yeah. And then another one, tiny tuba. Tinytuba.com. There is a tiny tuba. If you click it, does it make a sound? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. So this is almost a place to go to all the weird internet sites. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the finger. It's just a little mouse icon changing between its index and middle finger being up depending on how you scroll. Can you go far to the right and raise like another finger or is it just the middle oh, finger? It's just yeah, the middle finger. The middle finger. Nice. Yeah. I, and I'm just so curious where like, why, you know? Why do you spend your time this way? Well, so this is what I found was important is that uh, I was looking through these like weird websites and trying to find them. And a lot of the time we hear them through word of mouth or on Twitter. So, and then we forget about them. Yeah. We don't save them at all. And so some web websites that I've found encourage you to keep like spreadsheets and lists of the weird websites that you find. Just so you have your own directory that you can share with other people. Yeah. This is great. And I think it's a good segue for me to show you some of the ones I found. Oh, perfect. Take it away. Great. I, I, do you have to hand me the screen or do I just? OK, perfect. I'll get you over. Here we go. So href.cool. It, uh, this is what I was talking about. It is a list of just weird, like web 1.0 websites. So you can go to, for example, let's go to the home links of the decade. And it's kind of just a documentation of interesting and weird, fun things that you can find online. So as far as like, if you ever need an example of weird internet, this is a good directory that's kind of well done. It's just so, yeah, like the pure randomness of everything in this list. I like this a lot. Yeah. Like this is the vibe that I'm looking for when I'm looking for weird internet. But anyway, I thought this was great because it's a directory and essentially curation. This is curation as art. Mm -hmm. So like, just a collection of images and someone somewhere is curating this, which I really enjoy. So anyway, um, similar to like, show me something dumb. If you were just looking to waste time on a website that's not like Twitter. Right, yeah. This could give you a ton of like, this is the equivalent of Uncle John's Bathroom Reader. Have you ever picked one of those up? No. That it doesn't sound like something I'd want to pick up. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I was really into them. They're basically really um, large uh, reference books, but they're filled of just random interesting facts. They are, it's designed to read on the toilet. Got it, got it. Yeah, and so you can flip to any page and find something kind of weird and quirky to read. And <laughs> okay, yeah, something short anyway. interesting. That's not a shampoo bottle. Yes. So further, this is my favorite uh, weird internet thing, uh, one of them. And it's a subreddit. And I feel like we all can find like our favorite subreddits that have just bizarre content. Yeah. And this is just things 
that uh, have the letter G. It is R, G, 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 five Gs. And whenever people encounter just a lot of Gs in the wild, they'll post to this subreddit. This is weird in that like it takes all, it takes, takes up your offline time. It, you know? What do you mean? Oh, because like I'm looking for it now? Well, yeah, exactly, because you're going to be on the street, and you're going to be thinking about it, and it's like the minute you see it, you're like, oh my god, I just need to post that to the subreddit, it'd be so freaking cool, you know? And it's kind of yeah. like, weird, like, tra like, traverses that line of, like, online and offline. Yeah, sometimes people make it, like, this one looks, this is very strange. Yeah. And I like it because it's almost anti, like, there's nothing to understand. <laughs> right, it's just a very simple rule. Look at that. See, isn't that satisfying? Yeah. So I spend a surprising amount of time checking in here. Oh my gosh. But I like it because of, the, because of how anti-goal it is. Yeah. And also it's satisfying if I ever see something, I'm like, ah, I know exactly where this belongs. <laughs> uh, next, have you ever heard of I Love Bees? No. If it's so not I bees.com we just saw. No, different. So I Love Bees was, um, I, like, I don't even know the year that this was happening. I have the Wikipedia page somewhere. But it was a bees website that was hacked by a virus from the future. You can see that this has this weird um, mission log in the center of the screen. And okay. basically, Margaret's, the story was Margaret's honey was hacked from, by a virus from the future. OK. And if you click like uh, mission log or whatever. You, they have audio clips from like spaceships and things of what went wrong. Mm. And you basically had to solve a series of riddles and the riddles gave you actually like coordinates, addresses, times and locations where people would show up at like um, the like, uh, what are they called? Pay phones that would get phone calls to get the next clue and so it was uh, later revealed to be an alternate reality game that was made by Bungie, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. And so the way they drove traffic to the site, they actually had a uh, Halo 2 trailer that mysteriously flashed the URL to this website. And people were like, what's ilovebees.com? And they, this is a, um, they since have ported it to this website, ilovebees.co. But it was like a fully fleshed out game that was made by a bunch of engineers that were trying to bridge the gap between like online play and also real world play. Oh, that's super cool. Very cool. And so what I love is it's totally weird internet because you're like, this is bizarre and it's taking like, it's meta art. Yeah, yeah. So if you're ever curious about this, there's a full Wikipedia page. I'm, I may be butchering some of the details, but um. Definitely, when I think of weird internet, this is one of the main ones because it pushes genres and kind of glitches together different ways of thinking about online stuff. Mm, yeah. Next, this one Lido showed me. Pooflons. Cool. What is, okay, perfect. Pooflons are a magical sheep-like species that inhabit the Isle of Long. So this is, I, I did, I've gone to this website many times to try to figure out the best way to describe it. Uh, because the way Lido pitched it to me is that you can, you can purchase and own the designs of one of these pooflons of the species. And it is yours to create art with. And it also, it's kind of like, from what I understand, it's legally binding. No one else is allowed to produce, uh, images of the pooflon that you own so do you create the pooflon or is it created and then you have to buy it i think that it is generated for you like i was trying to look through the process because i'm like i'm light interested because of how strange it is but yeah it's like owning a star it's like doesn't really mean anything but like i'm but i can say i did right and so I'm trying to figure this out, but what it seems to be is like when I was like, how do I get a pooflon? They're like, it's a magical process that, um, and here are the species that can happen. And it, I think you have to join this person's community on DeviantArt and then um, 
go through a series of bureaucratic steps to own an, a Pouflon. Oh, this is not just something given to you. Yeah, and so it, there's an actual community and people trade them. I was looking at the trading boards and there are some Pouflons that were being traded for like 250 US dollars. <laughs> And so what I like about this is that it's weird internet in the sense where like, this is a community. Yeah. And requires, and also there's no easy explanation. <laughs> right. Like it's one of those things where it's like someone can ask you a question and you could probably go into like a two hour like rant about it. Thing. Yeah. So if I go to about, uh, yeah, see, I, I don't even, I don't even know where to begin. Wow. Let's click begin. But it's like, I want to be there. I don't know how Yeah, much so like, there. this reminds me of one of my friends. So like, when you're looking at this information, it's all of it's based in this fantasy land. Mm -hmm. And so there's no context beyond this. Oh, so anyway. But so well documented there's a starter guide like right yeah so it's it's almost like a okay it's a art role-playing game to play the game you take unique art and writing challenges set in the world of pouflons you can draw and write the game takes place in the pouflons group on deviant art okay so i wonder how i mean i haven't been on deviant art in like a decade but yeah. like I'm curious how, like, if it just becomes, like, a, you know, a community board thing, because I like this vibe, like, but I almost, like, I, I like, expect almost, like, a whole video game. <laughs> right. Out. And, like, really not. Yeah, so, again, this is weird internet. It's kind of well-designed, but you're here, and you're like, what, what is going on? Right, like, I am intrigued. What yeah. have I stumbled, I've stumbled into a sub-world. Right. And it's weird how like people do not have to, and yet they still create these like amazing little like alter universes online. And, yeah. and I think that's maybe that like, maybe that's what weird internet is. When I watched some of the videos and was doing the research, there were, um, they said early internet had this spirit of, Hey, you made it to the internet. Welcome to my home. Yeah. Let me like let you into my living room, stranger. And you could fill it with whatever the fuck you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And so now with Facebook, I mean, Facebook's on its way out anyway, so we don't even have to care about it. But like Instagram, you can fill it with your stuff, but there, it's, it's like having a, a Levittown house, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's wild, though. People will still like color coordinate their entire feed and like, diligently delete photos to make sure like these have you seen those things i feel like it's mostly in the makeup world but we're like they'll take photos that like are really zoomed in or whatever but like when you look at them in the grid it makes a bigger photo yes or just like makes stylistically like color there was one like fashion instagrammer that like cheyenne was showing me who had this color gradient so as you scroll through like the colors would change in yeah. gradient which was wild planning that that takes I don't know I just figure that like when it comes to technology people will always use it for self-expression yes and I think what we like some people are advocating for is less like aesthetically pleasing <laughs> well, like less fucks to give you know like I think it's a beautiful thing to just be like I made a thing it's like literally worthless but it's kind of fun and will bring you joy and like that's good enough like you don't have to find some way to like make money off of it right and it can be your hobby passion project and it doesn't have to look like a squarespace site exactly yeah so like maybe that so if you were to dabble in weird internet what would you make i would want to i don't know if i'm like clever enough but i would want to make like one of those endless games that like you never really win it's just more of like a thing to do you know there's like no leveling or anything like you know a lot like okay you know um there's like this keyboard game you can play on ios um mm -hmm. where it just like brings down a song and you just t try to tap the tile that the song is playing to yes forever and it's just like you're never going to win gold champion whatever it's just something to kill time with and it's enjoyable so yeah something along those lines i like that
And I, I like, I'm worried because I think our Zoom has a 40 minute limit and we may be there. For sure. But um, what I think the thing, it, the, it's basically inspiration for creating at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, look at all these examples. <laughs> if you want to make something, there's much dumber stuff. <laughs> Really, so and got, much more niche stuff too. If you have like a fully fleshed out thing, fucking go right. for it. If like you're the only person that enjoys it, it's worthwhile. Just do it. Make it. <laughs> Dope. Well, great. Thanks for tuning in. We're gonna close it up, and we will see you next week. Um, be weird if you wanna. Yeah. <laughs>